Hey everyone, it's Onglor. Welcome to the video. Glad to have you here. Today, I'm going to be talking about my first impressions and my overall feelings about Darkest Dungeon 2. Now, in my opinion, Darkest Dungeon 1 was simply a masterpiece. I enjoyed everything about that game. There was so much to do, and it was just overall a great experience for me to partake in. So, I'm going to do my best not to compare the two because, you know, it's the first and second. And I just don't want to go into like that whole ramble of, you know, comparing the two constantly. So with that said, I kind of want to get this out of the way right now. What I really miss is the stagecoach because one of the things that I really enjoyed was going through one of those long dungeons. And then when you completed it, looking in the stagecoach to see what heroes were waiting to embark on adventures with you. Because you never know, you had an opportunity to get a high level hero, which is really nice. And also, I'm going to miss building up my town. I did like sending out my, you know, heroes to various places, such as the tavern or the, you know, sanitarium. I'm just going to miss those couple things. So, with that being said, that's all I'm going to talk about when it comes to Darkest Dungeon 1. Now, let's talk about Darkest Dungeon 2. I was really excited to play this game. I was waiting for it to come out, and as soon as I woke up, I bought it and started playing and oh boy it is definitely darkest dungeon 2 so first off i want to talk about the graphics i think they are great and very well done i remember when they were starting development on darkest dungeon 2 they were talking about the graphics how they'd be different i seen a, a couple of images i th thought to myself okay i wonder how this is going to play out but overall i think they are fantastic now the actual stagecoach is, well, a moving stagecoach. I was not expecting that, and honestly, I'm really enjoying it. You can either move it yourself with the W key, or you can just double tap it, and it'll move on its own. And also, the stagecoach is actually pretty important, too, because that's where your inventory is stored as well, and there's quite a bit of difference with, with the way the items function in Darkest Dungeon 2, it's also important that you take note of them because it's going to be very beneficial to you because just the way that the items are done now, you just got to see what you can use and you can't use. So I do like the stagecoach and also they have a lot of conversation in the stagecoach. They complain a lot or sometimes they don't. I guess it's kind of like, you know, being in a band. If you guys are traveling a lot together, sometimes you can get on each other's nerves. And it's kind of the same way going along distance in the stagecoach. So overall, I like it. The combat is fantastic. I like the animations. I just really enjoy it. It's something I expect from Darkest Dungeon, you know? That's what it got us used to. And I really like the graphics and just overall feel of the combat system. So yeah, I really like it. All right, one of the other things I noticed was along in your travels, you have some road encounters. And you can assist these people while well, you have the options to either assist them or not. I would feel kind of bad not giving these people help because when you look at them on the roadside, it's like, what exactly are they going to do? I'm not for sure what's going on with these people, but honestly, I just assist them because if you notice, there's different choices and each one offers different rewards. So I guess you would choose whatever is helpful to you at the time. And also another thing I noticed very quickly was... The storage for the characters now i've played about an hour or so and i really want to see what the plague doctor was about so i started his story and i can be going into any spoilers and since i've only started well him this is i think the second part i think that's a really interesting turn of events and i think it's nice for people to get to know the heroes better now another thing i quickly noticed was the stress because as we all know in darkest dungeon one Stress was a huge thing we had to watch all the time and manage to the point, well, it stressed me out in real life and it stresses me out in Darkest Dungeon 2 as well. It's rewarded a little bit differently. I actually like it. Um, I don't know how a lot of people are actually going to feel about it, but when you go, you know, your stress level goes above, you know, you definitely get some negative things that happen. I remember one of my guys, uh, I think, I forgot, I think it was a highwayman who got super crazy and just lost so much health and dropped and his uh, relationship statuses broke with people, which we're going to talk about a little bit too. So when you do go for that stress limit, a lot of bad things happen. 
so it's just kind of a constant thing where you have to keep your eye on like i said i like it i'm not against it and one of the biggest things that was totally out of left field to me is the relationship statuses or bonds that the characters have now it is so big in my opinion they could have easily called this game like relationship dungeon 2 and it would be the same thing because oh boy it's so much and constant you can quickly build strong bonds with you know your fellow heroes or quickly break them and go into the negative of course when i first started out they were all you know fine but then darkest dungeon kicked in and my most of my heroes are hating each other now with no real control over it i mean there is some control like you can well when you go to the inn there's some items that can help you you know build relationships and sometimes just some weird things happen when i was fighting a couple battles my heroes that were on death's door had bad relationships with one another and then all of a sudden they formed a bond because they were both about to die so yeah it's just totally crazy and random and it's just one of those things where you just kind of let it sit back and happen so to me i i don't dislike it i just wish it would be toned down a little bit because it feels like it kind of breaks the feel of like the combat because of how often it happens like one of your characters saying something constantly after everybody's doing something it's like okay i get the drift can you just please tone it down so we can kill these enemies in front of us who are trying to rip off our heads so that system i'm still getting used to and there's a couple items that i'm definitely holding on to like the card playing decks to help one uh my heroes build better affinity because it can break really fast or it can bond really fast so yeah i'm still getting used to it and it's and it's interesting it's new so <laughs> i have a feeling after a while if i can get some better trinkets or some items we can definitely you know deal with that down the line so another thing i noticed that is super duper important i learned this very quickly is the inn because when you're actually out on the road you really can't like give your heroes stuff like you did in darkest dungeon one like if you're uh you know if you're in a long dungeon or something you can camp or you can give them food supplies to help their health you can't do that on the road you got to do all that stuff at the inn unless i'm mistaken because i tried you know giving my heroes this and that while i was out because a lot of times they were really low on health but when i got to the inn that's when i was actually able to manage all of my items try to de-stress my heroes try to build better bonds be between them and then i was actually able to upgrade their skills but not their armor i don't think the armor smith is here but i noticed i had an opportunity to upgrade certain skills so that's what i'm doing right now and then i was quickly looking through all of my items to make sure to see what i have which was beneficial my trinkets i was looking at the uh the relationship you know statuses all that type of thing so there is definitely a lot to do at the end and another very important thing i really noticed is to make sure to check out that provisioner and uh, implement any wagon upgrades that you have because your inventory gets filled super fast so i'm definitely using anything that gives me like inventory slots and then i'm using something where i can stack my food so there's a lot of things to do in the end before you go out because if you don't do them before you go out then yeah you're kind of screwed so overall after you know going about i want to say maybe even two hours playing this game i'm having fun with it so far it wasn't super expensive i think it was like 26 dollars honestly with the way games are priced these days i was, I was expecting to drop like around 40 so this wasn't too bad i'm having fun i'm still gonna get used to it and you know it's it's a pretty good game so far it's something to get used to you know it's definitely no darkest dungeon one but i'm having fun i think it's not bad price at, at all especially with the way games are priced these days so yeah i'm having fun with it and i'm gonna keep going and making some gameplay videos because i expect some more crazy th things to happen my party almost died a few times so yeah it's definitely darkest dungeon back to normal all right guys if you have played darkest dungeon 2 i would love to hear what you think about it are you having fun with it do you really dislike it because i haven't really watched too many streams or anything like that to see how people are feeling about it and since it is on the epic launcher well you know you really can't read people's reviews so i'm just kind of wondering what people are thinking about it 
All right, guys, I really want to thank you for uh, watching the video and take care. I will see you in the next one.